let's talk about closing because some of y'all need a shot in the arm of confidence. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all are tripping down the stairs. Some of y'all are being wusses. Some of y'all are not helping Mrs. Jones. And some of y'all's closing percentage, let's be, let's face it, is atrocious. And we love you and it's going to be okay. Now, there's a couple things that I want to talk about when it comes to closing. And then I want to teach you like the Jesse special, the Uncle Jesse special on how you close on every demo, no matter what, okay? Or almost all your demos, no matter what. Using specials number one, two, three, and four, which by, or one, two, and three, which by the way, are sometimes the most, the, the place that by the time you've dropped down to the specials, you feel like you've lost all your confidence. How many of you know what I'm talking about? By the time they've told you no on the homemaker and on the galley and on the starter set, you're just, you feel beat and you feel like you're leaning on them and you feel like you're like, oh my gosh, are they going to hate me? Do I really ask for the order again? And that is the part where a lot of people get deflated. That's the part where I get excited because that's the best part of the demo, Kimberlina, is when they get to pick their five favorite pieces. But before we jump into that, when it comes to closing, there's a couple really important things that you've got to remember. Okay. So, First of all, we got to talk about the two assumptions. Everybody got notes? Taking notes? Okay. There are two assumptions that you always must operate on when it comes to closing. Okay. Your first assumption or your first thing you always operate on is that the customers are always closer to buying, Kimmy, than you think they are. Always. You got to remember that. Okay. Customers are always closer to buying than you think they are. That's important. So we got to write that down. And you've got to remember that the sale will always be lost in your mind, Connor, before it's lost in the customers. The sale is always lost in the representative's mind before it's lost in the customers. And the customers are closer to buying than you think they are. And when you're dropping down, closing isn't supposed to be a battle. It's supposed to be a service. A service where you're helping your customer find the right price to value combination where it makes sense for them to get a set of Kako today. Remember, half of your orders are sets, kind of, when you're brand new. I'm going to tell you this, though. Two-thirds of your orders, probably. Two-thirds of my order probably weren't sets. Probably only a third of my orders were homemakers and galleys here and there, but the other and starter sets, but the other two thirds, the other 60 to 70% of all my orders that I had at this career were a combination of pieces that fit the customer's needs. All right. And so you want to become an expert at doing the small pieces. At, you want to become an expert at selling two, three, four, five, or six or seven or eight pieces to like our co owners. Okay, so those are two things you got to remember. The sales are always going to be lost in your line, mind before it's lost in the customers. And when you go into a demo, by the way, some of you are just going into a demo to see what happens. How many of you, by the way, maybe you don't need to raise your hands, but how many of you have been guilty of that? Oh, yeah, you roll into a demo. Like, oh, well, we'll do the pre's and we'll see what happens. Balderdash. Bolonki and Cobb Swallow. Poppycock right? Need I say more? That is the worst mindset that you can ever have. Here's the thing. How would like a, an NBA team perform if they rolled into a professional game or a professional golfer or a professional music artist rolled into a concert or a performance and said, I guess we'll see what happens. They would get obliterated. That is no way to operate in life. Connor, what if you went into your relationship with your significant other and went, I guess we'll see what happens. I wouldn't be in a room right now. <laughs> you wouldn't be in a relationship, right? And so why would you ever go into a Cutco presentation not expecting to sell Cutco? Cutco is a great product. Wouldn't you guys agree? When your customers see the product, they're like, for the most part, 95, 90, 95% of the people we show Cutco to are like, yeah, this is great. This makes sense. I can see myself using this. Every once in a while, you get some negative Nancy that's like, yeah, whatever. I don't need one. All right, whatever, Susie. Um, everybody else loves Cutco. 
And so every time you do a presentation, if you're not our, if at the beginning of the presentation, you're not wondering what they're going to buy. If you are wondering if they're going to buy games already lost, you're done, you're out. You might as well not even go into that demo, basically. In fact, I'm going to tell you this, never, ever again in your life, go into a presentation that you're not expecting to sell. If at the beginning of that presentation, you're like, yeah, I'm just, I'm not feeling it. Great. Just cancel it. Or better yet, call your manager. Say, hey, pump me up. By the way, as well, I've had to do that. I've done that with Phil numerous times over my Kako career. Because I even at like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in sales, Trina's not in her head. Why? Because this has happened too. Persons that had this happen too. Forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in sales for me personally. I remember I had three no sales in a row. And I called Phil. And like my mental state was like, dude, I'm broken. Nobody buys Kako. Like, damn, I don't, <sighs> this doesn't work anymore. Who cares that I'd sold 40,000? I was like mentally beat down. Call Phil. He's like, you know, I'm like, Phil, I, I need you to pump me up. It's called Pump Me Up PDI. And he would pump me up. He'd get me, get me psyched and ready to go. He'd be like, bro, you've got this. And here's, you know, who's the next customer? Do they, they own a home? Oh, yeah, they own a home. Do they have kids? Oh, they have kids. Do they cook? Dude, don't tell me that they go to Costco. Yeah, they go to Costco, Phil. All right, cool. Well, you're going to go sell a homemaker. We're gonna, you're going to go sell some cocoa. And I'd go in there, I'd sell some cocoa and I'd be like, yes, everybody buys cocoa, right? And you're rolling to your next demo and then you forgot about the first three. How many of you have had that happen before, right? So you need to always be wondering, what am I going to sell? Not, am I going to sell? So it's what? Okay. Now, just a couple of quick mindset things there. The other thing um, is that when it comes to dropping down, you need to be getting more excited as you drop down, which by the way, that means that some of you, I'll just put this out there, might be getting way too excited about the homemaker set. You didn't expect that to come out of me, did you? Did you? Did you? How many of you have ever had a customer look at you, Trina, and be like, well, if we're going to get something, we're just going to get the homemaker set down the road. So, you know, don't even, don't show me the smaller stuff. We'll just call you later. We'll buy that. Right, Angelica? Cool. Good job getting excited about the homemaker. But sometimes we get so excited about the homemaker that we don't have anywhere to go up. So be a little, still get excited about it. But by the time the galley comes, leave yourself some room to be like, all right, wait a second, Mrs. Jones. That's not going to work for you. Okay. Mrs. Jones, do you carve a turkey every day? No. Do you have you do stuff all the time? No. Could you get by with two less table knives? You could. Mrs. Jones, you don't need a homemaker. You need a galley. Let me show you this. This is this is amazing. And you should promote the galley like a band that's coming to town. Oh my gosh. Like you've got it. Mrs. Jones, check this out. Instead of paying 15, and here's a tip, quick tip for you when you're promoting this. This is exactly what I would do in a demo, by the way. Mrs. Jones, instead of paying $1,549, I would throw the homemaker under the bus. Gone. Screw the homemaker at this point, right? A band in the homemaker under the bus. Instead of paying $1,549 $1, for a homemaker, Mrs. Jones, that galley plus six sack, get this. It's basically a homemaker. It's $1,116, right? $1,116. Yeah, $1,116. It's $243 per month. Mrs. Jones, $243. That's way more affordable. Oh, by the way, I can still give you the same free stuff. It's the entertainer pack, kitchen tool, or super shares. What would you rather have? Oh, Mrs. Jones, you'd rather have the entertainer pack? Great. Would you like to go ahead and get the galley set today and get your entertainer pack for free? How many of you are thinking to yourself like, oh crap, I see where I dropped the ball, right? You're like, oh, that's why nobody's excited to get galley sets. So that's just a tip on dropping down. Now I want to, I really, what I really want to cover those, the five pieces, because man, if you do this the right way, you should always be able to close a couple pieces. And what I want for you is to bring your average order down. And I mean this in a positive way. If you're only selling big packages, it means you're only selling to the people who absolutely are just like kind of loaded and love Kotko. If you're not selling smaller packages, it means you're missing the opportunity on helping a lot of people get a little bit of Kotko, which is still a win because how many of you would like to have an extra couple, one or two or $300 orders? You give me an extra three $300 orders. That's an extra thousand bucks a week. An extra thousand bucks a week over the next 10 weeks. That's 900, but fine. 900 bucks a week over the next 10 weeks. It's an extra $9,000 in sales. $9,000 in sales at 
right? That's an extra $3,000 in income. Who'd be okay at the end of the next 10 weeks, you had an extra $3,000 in your pocket. Why? Because you closed an extra two or three orders for some pieces, 100%. So let's talk about the cart really quick. When you get to this part in the manual, so let's go here, myvectordemo.com. We'll go over here, we'll go page nine. And we drop down, right? When you get back to, when you get past the starter sets, by the way, never skip the starter sets. I got to a point where I thought, well, why not just skip the starter sets? Cause we're gonna build their five pieces that are better than the starter sets anyway. Cause none of the starter sets have exactly what they want, but never skip them. It's always important to get one of those extra no's out of the way, Connor. And it price positions this next thing really well. So when we say, hey, Mrs. Jones, let's pick your five favorite pieces. You've got to be excited about this, Izzy. And I'm going to give you a couple pointers. So Mrs. Jones, you can customize your own set. And I can still get you something for free. So Mrs. Jones, let's make a list of the five favorite pieces you see yourself using the most. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you right now, Beth, if you were doing your job correctly, during the names and uses section of the homemaker, there should be some pieces that stood out to the customer. How many of you have had that happen? Like customers like, oh yeah, spatula spread or whatever, petite carver, that's nice. Oh, that chef knife though. Dang, Connor, I'd use that chef knife all the time, right? The customer, <laughs> uh, right? Connor, put that over your head, light bulb. Hang on, he just, he just found a lighter, right? Light bulb, all right. So he just psh, had a light bulb right there. Um, there should be some pieces same thing, Brandon, for your customers that are like, oh my gosh, my husband would use that butcher knife all the time. Or, oh, that's bad. That is so sweet, right? How many of you would agree that some customers get a little bit more excited about other pieces than others, right? Okay. This is the perfect time to capitalize on that because, and not capitalize for your own sake, but it's to help them capitalize on that. Mrs. Jones, they get to cut the fluff. They don't need anything they don't want in the homemaker. They get to pick exactly what they want here. So if you're paying attention, the whole point of this, Angelica, you should be able to tell them what their first two or three pieces are. When you say, hey, let's pick the five favorite pieces you see yourself using the most. Mrs. Jones, you like that chef knife, right? She's like, oh yeah, you're right. I did. I like that chef knife. Great. Let me put that on the list. And in real time, people, you should have the cart open and be adding that to the cart. How many of you, by the way, are doing that? Like while you're doing quoting the five favorite pieces, you got the cart open and the customer says the five, you're like searching it, adding it to the cart, right? As they say it. Good doing that the right way all right then we go over here um somebody else help me out what's going to be our other four pieces knock them out really quick go spatula oh goodness spatula trimmer all right spatula trimmer cheese knife agreed slicer i'll roll with it slicer all right by the way, that's, wouldn't you guys agree that's a rad set of five pieces? They got big ones, they got small ones, got medium ones, right? And they got things for different stuff. Tell me that a customer that cooks five, you know, two to three times a day for her kids wouldn't have all of those in the dishwasher every single day because they're dirty. You look at my cutco right now, Isabella, my block right now, and I guarantee you, chef knives is in the sink, spatula spreaders in the sink, both trimmers are in the sink, in the cheese knife, is in the sink every other day, if not every day. Slicer, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I cut bread with the bread slicer, I wipe it off and I put it back in the block. Anybody else do that with bread knives? Yeah, Connor, it's such a dude thing to do, right? Just don't, it's like taking your ramen pan and not washing it. You just rinse it and put it back in the, in the, uh, in the thing. Anyway, all right. So then what you're gonna say is, hey, Mrs. Jones, give me one minute to work on those prices. Now, I'm going to tell you a really easy spot where sometimes representatives miss this. And what I love about this, by the way, if you're like, oh, crap, I missed that. It's a really easy fix. Sometimes representatives don't actually quote the customers for the prices. They just say, hey, you could get five knives and get this for free. Do you want to do that? That is not the correct way. No, I'm pretty sure I taught all you better than that. I don't think you guys are struggling with that. But if you're watching this recording in the future and that's you, make sure that you're actually quoting the prices for the customers like so all right so you take the price what's our total order here 586 okay 586 and what's our five pay we click here it's a buck 19 we'll call it a buck 20 
Okay. All right. So we're 586 and we're buck 20. So then you say, Hey, Mrs. Jones, I'm ready for the price with you. So you can go ahead and jot this down. Now, this is another key part of closing that a lot of times representatives really shoot themselves in the foot. How many of you have ever forgot to ask your customers to write down the prices? Easy fix. Do that. It makes a massive difference because they need to see what it is for what they're getting. All right, Mr. Jones, I'm ready for the price with you. You can go ahead and jot this down. The total, by the way, for your custom set is 586. That breaks down a buck 20 on a payment plan. And Mrs. Jones, check this. If you get these five knives today, you guys hear the energy in my voice, how it's up and down, but it's like, there's still this energy. That's the energy you want to have with your customers. Mrs. Jones, get this. If you get these five knives today, I can give you a pack of super shares or a pack of four table knives for free. Which free option would you want if you were to do it today? You're like, well, we'd want the table knives. All right, great, Mrs. Jones. Well, would you like to go ahead and get this custom set today and get yourself a pack of, oh, by the way, did you guys know how much the freaking table knives cost? Look at this. Four table knives in a tray is $213. How much is their first payment? A buck 20. They're almost getting twice the amount of free stuff for their first payment. It should be illegal to give them the table knives for free. By the way, it almost is. No, it's 22 points. That's actually pretty solid. Shut the front door. And you should tell them that, by the way. When you show them the five pieces, Mrs. Jones, hey, it's... um. What it is, would you like to go ahead and get this set today and get your $218 worth of table knives for free? And they go, wait a minute, didn't you say the five pay was 120? And you're like, yeah, Mrs. Jones, it should be illegal to give you that much for free, but I want to hook you up today. Also, how many pieces are in the homemaker set? Tell me with your hands. How many tools? 10. Yeah. How many table knives come in the homemaker set? Eight. Is this not half a homemaker set? It's half a homemaker set for $120 a month. Yeah. Notice 337 divided by two is 170 bucks, not 120. How many of you are like, holy crap, I just realized that like I'm missing, I missed some orders here. I can see a couple of you are like, crying inside you're like if you'd have told me this like three weeks ago like i could have had like another six orders um right but like they're buying half a homemaker set you should be so stoked to get them half a homemaker oh by the way what is their cpo it's 391 all in favor of having like almost a 400 dollar 100 400 dollar order i don't care if you ever sell a homemaker set ever again in the rest of your entire life help people get five knives and you should be excited about this because that's exact that's the only things they want no fluff We'll pay for a block. Oh, by the way, you want to know something else cool? Check this out. Oh, yeah, you see that five piece fork and knife tray? Check this out chef knife, large piece, slicer, large piece, spatula, medium, cheese, medium, trimmer, small piece. All of those will fit in a tray. Shut up. They get their five favorite pieces in a tray in the drawer, and they get a four pack of table knives in a tray. They get exactly half a homemaker. This is amazing. And that's how I sold Kako every order. Because it didn't matter what the budget does. Everybody can afford 120 bucks. 120 bucks doesn't scratch my grocery bill for one trip. I can accidentally spend 120 bucks at Costco as an HM3. Just so you know, by the time I grab bagel bites and chocolate covered raisins and steak strips and like some other things, I'm 120 bucks lighter. Now, if your customer still says no to this, can I teach you one of my favorite specials? What's the next special, right? Next special says, oh, this one's really popular. You buy three, get the fourth for free, right? So that you, you trim one and do the lightest one for free. But don't. Connor, I'm going to teach you special one. Yeah, you know, you know, special 1.5. What's special 1.5? Special 1.5, Isabel, as you keep this in your back pocket, is instead of giving them the free stuff, if you look at five pieces, almost always, Serenity, you can give the medium priced one for free which is the cheese knife. Give them 108 bucks off. Comes out to be 478. You can still put that on a five pay and we are sub $100. So 478. 
And that's, we'll call that 98 bucks. All right. So say, Hey, Mrs. Jones, you like those five favorite pieces, right? What's, you know, and she says, and by the way, you still got to ask her, Hey, would you like to get that today? And she says, Oh no, Connor. Oh man, we really love that. But it's just that we had to replace tires in the car. We had to replace the water heater. We're paying for our kid's mission. Tuition's coming up. It's just a bad time, whatever. All of that's just a smoke screen for, Hey, give me a better deal or find me something I can say yes to. All right. Sometimes representatives, they hear the customer say, Oh, we just don't have any money. And that one cracks me up because it's like, yes, they have money. They're just telling you they don't have their, they're just telling you that the money they have right now isn't worth it to spend on what you've showed them yet because you're not giving them a good enough deal. So we drop down and we say, Hey, Mrs. Jones, tell you what, my next special would be a buy three, get the fourth free. And I can show you that in a second, but tell you what, Mrs. Jones, instead of giving you the table knives, what if I just went ahead and dropped $108 off the order? So Mrs. Jones, go ahead and write this down right now. So what that would come out to be is actually, it would only be 578 instead of you know 586. And that breaks down to $98 on the five pay. And I can still throw in that $33 tray and you never have to buy knives ever again. You're basically getting your half a homemaker, Mrs. Jones, and, uh, and you're good to go. How does that sound? It's 25 bucks a week. You think your customers could afford 25 bucks a week? I don't care who the heck they are. I spend 25 bucks a week on burritos. And that's not even, that's like three burritos. You know what I mean? If a burrito costs $10, actually it's only two and a half burritos. Your customers can afford two and a half burritos a week for five months. Anyway, now when you do the buy three, get the fourth for free, you understand that one. But let me show you a, a twist, Sierra, and this is for you because you asked this question yesterday in the chat. Let me show you a quick twist on the, uh, the free gadget special. When you're going through this, Sierra, instead of doing, you know, let's say they pick their two favorite knives, which, sure, just so you know, we'll go a cheese knife and a petite chef. Did you guys know? that if a customer buys two medium or large pieces, you could give them a small piece for free. You know, that's not illegal, right? Just because it's not in the manual doesn't make it illegal. It's actually pretty decent on bonus points. And it's still a $195 order. Who'd be okay selling three pieces and giving a trimmer for free? So here's what I'd say is I'd say, hey, Mrs. Jones, what's your two favorite pieces? Well, hey, just so you know, if you were to get that, and I would take her favorite three that she likes, if you were to get the petite chef and the cheese knife, I'd actually be able to give you that $88 trimmer today. That'd only be $274, which by the way, $274 broke down on a three pay is only $93. Bucks. You never have to buy knives ever again. And I'm giving you an $88 trimmer. How does that sound? Do you want to get that in classic or pearl? That's a quick see that one right there. It's called a soft close. Did you want to get that in classic or pearl? Oh, cool. Do you want to pay? You want to use a debit card or credit card? Great. Let me go ahead and check that out. And if they're like, well, I don't know, then you say, oh, cool. What, what about that? You know, are you unsure of? Oh, still just a little bit too much. Hey, tell you what, Mrs. Jones, you know, you can still get one piece. And again, get more excited about that. Who thinks, by the way, and we could talk about this all day long. And I, and I could, if it was me, up to me, every Champions Club would be how to, how to smell, smell, smell the order, smaller orders. Um, how to smell the yaller orders. How to sell the smaller orders. How many of you think you could close some smaller orders this week? I want you to have a lot of confidence when you're dropping down. And just remember, sales always lost in your mind, force lost in the customers. When they're picking their five favorite pieces, that's the part where they get to actually have fun because they're picking the stuff that makes exactly the most sense for them. And you're finally getting within our average order size. 400 bucks on a five pay is $80. You're finally getting to a place, Angelica, where like anybody can say yes to that as an HM3, regardless of what their budget is. Cool. All right. Crush this. You guys are going to kill it this week. Our goal is to get, uh,